All right, while they're getting the song ready, don't forget now, um, if you're visiting with us this morning, we're really glad to have you. Uh, make yourself at home. Uh, and maybe, maybe first time, I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, I hope that you'll uh, just enjoy yourself this morning, get blessed by the services. Don't forget to put down um, all these special events coming up. And then tonight is really going to be something special. Ronnie the Bus Man, one of the most unusual characters I've ever met in my life. Man gets 90 kids to church every Sunday uh, somehow. Uh, most, runs four or five buses. And he does it all, pays for it all. Don't even have a church supporting him. And it's unbelievable the ministry that guy has. He's going to be here and bring some of them tonight. So don't miss that, okay? All right, y'all go ahead. It's out of your hands You've done all you, you can, can do yeah. Yes, sir Amen You've given, given God, God the problem Amen. It's no longer Amen. up to you You prayed the prayer of faith You're standing on God's truth While you're waiting on Question for you Is anything too hard for God? Who's got a problem beyond his power to solve? Are there situations? the master of is anything too hard for God only believe trust his word you'll see his plans are now unfolding they're performing perfect She loves you. Just look at all he's done while you're waiting on the answer. There's really only one. Is anything too hard for God? Who's got a problem? He's not the master of Is anything too hard for God? Is anything too hard for God? Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. And the answer is what? No. No, sir. Now, uh, I didn't mention a minute ago, uh, Labor Day's a good day to spend with family and friends, uh, plan a cookout. That's what we're doing. The, the worst thing you can do is go somewhere tomorrow um, because there's many crazy people out on the road. <laughs> but we stay home and, and cook out or something like that unless you plan to visit family or friends. And then uh, we need some men. Yeah, we're going to work here and cut weeds tomorrow evening, 5.30. A chainsaw, heavy equipment, Any, a dynamite would work, uh, get it done even faster. But uh, we're getting took over out here, so uh, we're going to work tomorrow. Men, I mean, ladies too if you want to, but they're going to bring some weed eaters and stuff tomorrow evening at 5.30, and that way you can have all your, uh, we're, we're feeding the, the Citron family tomorrow, so Lord have mercy. Uh, that's army right there, and we have 15 people to house tonight. Uh, at, or tomorrow, and then we're going to say, okay, you had fun, now guess what? 
all fun and no work is makes a weird, lazy, good for nothing person. Uh, I know, somebody's telling me about this boy the other day, and they said he's lifting weights, and he's a young man, and he's lifting weights, going. I don't know why they have to do that. Uh, but he, he's put, and put, and he wore out and sweating and everything. And they said, now, can you help me with it? And he said, no, I don't feel like it. Uh, there's something, else, something weird about somebody like that. Uh, weed eating is good for anybody that wants to be a football player or a basketball player. It is. It's good for your arm. Learn how, you know, good for your leg. Learn how to stand sideways on a bank. Uh, weed eating will make you prettier, girls. <laughs> You don't believe that, do you? <laughs> Look what it done for her. All right. Let's open our Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. We'll take our Bibles, please. I want to bring you a thought this morning. It's been on my heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And the, the Apostle Paul, inspired, led by the Holy Ghost, was writing this great chapter Normally, when you mention 1 Corinthians 13, everybody thinks you're going to preach about charity, Bible love. But this morning, we're going to take a verse out of this and use it. It's verse 11. Verse 11. Everybody look at this now. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Dad, dad, mom, goo, goo. I, when I was a ch little child, I spoke like a child speaks. I understood as a child, like that. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Simply means when you, when you grow up, you put your baby dolls up, you quit playing in the dirt with your fingers and be a grown man. I want to preach this morning on church babies, church babies. There are thousands. <laughs> Honest to goodness, people. You, the pastor in a church in the day we're living in, I meet pastors all over the place, and they say, Preacher, I, these people in my church, are they get mad over the least little thing, like a baby. They get their feelings hurt if you look at them sideways like a baby, and they just will. The Bible said in Ephesians 4 and verse 14 and 15, henceforth we be no more children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, but, but grow up in the Lord. You should be way more mature this morning. Down just higher, Jeremy. Uh, this morning in the Lord than you was five years ago. There are thousands of churches all over the south and I love the South, I'm from the South, and I'm Southern to the bone. But I'm telling you, filled with families of saved people who have been in church all their life but are still babies in Christ and completely childish in their actions, their words, even in their beliefs. I've heard people in churches that have been in church 40 years say stuff like, well, you know the Bible says every tub will set on its own bottom. I've heard people say cleanliness is next to godliness and men in church half their life. The Bible don't say that. Mom always said the Bible said that you're supposed to burn anything a rat touches. And I thought, what if it gets on my foot in the night, Mom? Uh, the Bible don't say that. <laughs> And I, I, mom said that. I don't know where she got that. It does talk about stuff like that. And they'll talk about cleanliness, but it don't say that. I, I have heard people stand, I've heard deacons stand uh, churches in these little old Baptist churches across this country stand up in church and stand up and say, Dear Lord, we thank thee for this another beautiful Sabbath day. And just like they had good sense. I mean, been in church 40 years and think Sunday is a Sabbath. I, I believe I'd nod my head if I was you. Well, what have you been doing all your life? I, I know people. Uh, that man, A woman told me I haven't been saved very long at all. And she, 
She was three times my age, I guess, or twice, and she'd been supposed to have been a Christian for 30 years and told me, she said, well, you have to do what you think is right, Danny. I mean, I look back on that now, and I thought, how could anybody say something so dumb? I, I had somebody say one time, they said, well, follow your heart. The main thing is follow your heart. Where in the world is stuff like that? So I'm talking about church people. I'm talking about people who claim to believe the Bible. You know what the Bible says about your heart? It says it's desperately wicked and it's deceitful. Worst thing you can do is follow your heart uh, when, it ain't, when it ain't going. Some of y'all can say amen to that, can't you? Look where it got you. And, and, uh, and buddy, I'm telling you, that, that's a dangerous thing. man said one time, uh, he, he said, uh, well... Or, hey, kids, let's, let's have a good day here, and, and we just want to have a great day in the Lord. And, you know, you go by your conscience, and, and whatever you do, you got to do whatever you think is right, and so forth and so on. It, they're baby and childish. Now, I'm going to talk about being church babies this morning. I'm talking about people that ought to know better. Now, listen, if a, little, if a little baby comes up here this morning and grabs this microphone and goes, and slobbers on it, you know, and knocks this over and everything, uh, we can all look over that, right? So, okay, the baby got, uh, 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 it got it, put him, set him down or something. But if Jeremy or Jimmy comes up here and goes, blah, 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 and slobbers on the microphone and knocks it down, then we got a problem. I mean, they are, should be much more mature in that. And we have little churches all over this country that are filled with people. And I mean, the preachers are trying to pastor a bunch of people that are absolutely childish in the way they think, in the way that. I, I knew of a church where a deacon got mad and quit, I said it was a, a, a leader in the church, got mad and quit the church because somebody else sang the song that he was going to sing. Truth, truth. I, I, I was like, well, I was going to sing that song. I'm just not coming back. You know that blue goo goo gaga. Uh, you need a pacifier about, I'm going to get me one of them big ones, you know, like they, they sell like in novelty stores and just start passing them out uh, for people like that. Uh, I've heard a lady got mad and quit the church, another church, because the pastor's wife wore a dress, and she had went out and bought one just like it, and she says, I cannot believe she wore that dress, and I'm, I'm just not going back to that. One man quit because somebody was sitting in his seat that he always sat in. I'm telling you the truth. Now, you ought to try to pastor a bunch of people that are that sensitive and immature and childish. Paul said, I acted like a child when I was a child. When you, when you become a grown man, it's time to put your spiritual marbles up and get a grip. I know people all the time say, well, I miss the good old days when people run the aisles and shouted. Well, guess what? Pe them people's dead. It's your turn now. You are the old people. You are the generation that ought to be running the aisles and shout. Them people's done gone in the rest home brother it's time for us our generation to grow up and take responsibility and say hey I ain't just riding in the back seat in the car, in the car seat no more I'm driving this thing I'm, I'm piloting the ship I'm, I'm in charge of something and so this morning let's talk about that a lot, lot could be said I'm going to say marks of church babies number one church babies are marked by a desire to play to play Kids are always saying, let's plaque. When we was little, we say, let's, let's plaque. Let's plaque for this. Let's plaque for this. Let's plaque for policemen. Let's plaque for fire. And that play like. Let's play like. Remember when kids used to say that? Uh, let's play like uh, we're this. And, and they are they're playing, literally playing church. I mean, they'll lay down in the floor. Not serious. Don't, don't worry about where the bills are paid. When you're a little kid, you roll around in the floor at home. You don't worry about the bills being paid. You don't worry about... Uh, them cutting electricity off or, or grocery being on the table. Listen, people, there are people that are 50 and 60 years old and 40 and 30 go to church every Sunday and never even worry about who pays the bills here. How do, how do we keep this thing going? Uh, uh, or do, uh, do we need this done or that? They just goo goo ga ga every way and come in and uh, like no sense of, of, of maturity whatsoever. It's unbelievable. It's 
It's absolutely unbelievable. I talk to pastors all the time. They'll say, Brother Danny, I had a woman come in. Lord have mercy, she gets her feelings hurt. There's a woman sitting right there one time, right beside on that second row. And she hadn't been to church in a while. And I called, finally got her number and called her. Or called, I said, somebody get in touch with her. And here's what she said. She'd come here for nearly a year. She said, I tried to shake Danny Castle's hand, and he walked right by me. I ain't going back. That's what she said. Now look, y'all. When I walk in here on Sunday morning, there's like 15 people trying. I mean, the air condition, the, the sermon. The, and just because I don't stop and say, oh, hey, you look so nice today. Will you please uh, not let that bother you if I don't do that? Listen, you have to grab my coat as I run by, y'all. If you want to talk to me, you better grab me and walk with me. I said, walk with me. I'm talking, I've got stuff to do. I can't just sit in here and get you a passy for you. I can't just sit in here and say, Say, but Brother Danny said a baby. It'll feel baby. I can't do that to you. Child babies are marked by desire just to play. I don't remember. I would never not speak to you on purpose. And I don't even remember doing that that late. I didn't do that on purpose. If I did, I didn't know it. Number two, babies are marked by selfishness. Egocentric, you know what that means? That means they want everything for their self. If they don't get their way, they are unhappy. Isn't that true? If a baby don't get their way, Frankie, back there in the nursery, Lord have mercy. We've had him, how long have we had Frankie? Two weeks, he moved in two weeks ago. And uh, he, he's seven months old. You know what? He has no respect for my sleep time. All he wants is what he wants. Ring a bell, sound like anybody you know? <laughs> somebody get mad. I'm in Charlotte, and somebody's having surgery in Iceville, and why can't he be here? Because I ain't Superman, that's why. I'm not Jesus. I can't be in two places at once. Frankie, in the middle of the night, and, and Kelly didn't go to bed. I mean, I'm, she's work, man. I, that woman has, I'm, I'm, she impresses me. The way she keeps going, doing all this stuff. I mean, she we went to bed at it was 20 after 1 when I looked at the clock last time this morning. She had to get up at uh, uh, a little before 6 to go ride the Lenore bus because Vicky's out of town with a 7-month-old. Some of you quit because you got one. Uh, you know, I got, and, and boy, I'm telling you, uh, she, 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 Frankie this morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, I said, shut up, Frankie. I, I ain't been asleep two hours. You know what? He don't care. I want my ball. It don't matter that Kelly's got to get up at 6. It don't matter that Brother Danny's got to preach today. I want my bottle. That's a mark of a baby. The mark of a baby is to heck with everybody else and what they feel or want. I want what I want. Make me happy. I want my way. It don't matter if the whole church suffers. I want to do what I want to do. Listen. You're never going to amount to anything for God. We'll never have the church that God wants us to have as long as everybody walks in here thinking, help me, do something for me, minister to me, meet my needs, take care of me. Listen, there's got to be a time when you grow up and say, hey, this, I'm the other, it's the other way around. I'm supposed to help. I'm supposed to work. I'm supposed to serve. I'm supposed to do something besides just come in here and soak it up every Sunday. Say amen right there. Marked by selfies. One lady, I know her. It's another church, not ours. They're getting ready to have a business meeting. They're going over to Sunday school classes. She wanted to teach a certain class. And they said, well, there's another lady being considered for that class. She said, if I don't get to teach that class, I'll quit and go to another church. Now, one thing she confirmed, she had no business teaching class. Somebody that wicked and backslid and immature and selfish has no business teaching Sunday school. You can't live being so selfish that if you don't get your way, listen, I meet people that every time I see them, they're going to another church. What do I, I didn't like the way they did this. I didn't like the way they did that. 
Ah, I didn't like the way they did that. And I know, I mean, it happens, stuff happens. We've all changed churches before. I mean, I mean, you, you can expect it once or twice in life, but not every six months. Good night, people. I'm not going back there. I'm not going back there. Some man got my parking place. I'm not going back there. She wasn't nice to my baby. I'm not going back there. He, she, he didn't shake my hand. I'm not going back there. there. Don't there come a time when you start saying, hey, God, you put me where I need to be and I'll serve and I'll work. I'll be an adult. I'll make the money and feed the babies instead of be the baby. Hey, y'all, do you think think, do you think, there's people sitting right here and I have nobody in mind when I say this, I'm just shooting from the hip, okay, I mean I get up here on Sunday morning, I got like a 20 gauge shotgun, boom, and it just hits wherever it hits, okay, once in a while I get my deer rifle out, I zero in on it, but uh, this morning I'm just going, blam, I seen like a 12, uh, double barrel 20 gauge, like I seen yesterday over the flea market, and, and boy, I, an old guy's got them 20 gauge, and I thought, that's where you splatter it out everywhere. There are probably people sitting right here this morning, you don't get, pay your tithes, you steal from God every single week, you make money and you refuse to give your part, you know why? You just let everybody else take care of it, and just flow up, that's what babies do, that's what babies do. Babies ride in the back seat and ride along with everybody else and let daddy put the gas in it. Let daddy and mama pay the car payment. Let daddy and mama put tires on it. Let daddy and mama pay the insurance. Let daddy and mama do everything. Don't you think it's about time you started carrying your share of the load a little bit? I'm saying don't be a baby all your life. Don't be a baby all your life. Amen? When I walk in Walmart, everybody in there don't just drop what they're doing and say, oh, hey, it's so good to see you. We are, is there anything I can help you do it? They don't do me like that. They look at me like, what are you doing in here? So I'm a, I, I mean, <laughs> don't even know how to answer an atheist. I've had people say, Brother Danny, help me, help me. My faith is shook. I said, what's the matter? Well, I ran this guy's work, and he's an atheist, and he told me that men wrote the Bible. I'm about ready to give up. Now, listen, y'all. If you can't handle nothing no better than that, you, you really, really need to turn your TV off for about two or three years and get in your Bible, do some studying, listen. For, you don't have to be educated. You don't have to be a genius. To figure out, so listen, men wrote the science books, people. Men wrote them books he's quoting, and they wasn't inspired neither. We believe the Bible because it's never been proved wrong. We believe the Bible because it's historically and scientifically correct. We believe the Bible because it predicts the future and never misses one. Answer somebody. Learn how to answer for your faith. Don't become, don't give up every time you hear an atheist say, oh, there is no God, that's silly. A lot of Christians say, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, what if they're right? What if they're right? Lord, have mercy, grow up. Know what you believe. Know why you believe it. Stand on the word of God. Listen, people, we got 10,000 times more reason to believe what we believe than what that crowd does believe. We don't believe cartoons that Darwin invented. We don't believe everything come from nowhere. We believe sensibly and maturity and right that God made everything in this world. Number three, being a baby is marked by a lack of gratitude. Amen? Let me tell you a story. This ain't really much of a point. I just wrote this down last night. This is a weird story. Have you ever studied camels? Camels are very useful animals in parts of the world where they have camels. I don't know why we don't use them around here. I don't know if too cold, I reckon. But they are ugliest, stubborn, and dangerous. Camels are ugly, stubborn, and dangerous of all the so-called tamed animals. They can kick sideways as well as forward and back. You know, like a horse, they just kick like that. That's about a camel can kick you like that. <laughs> Usually, you know, when I get behind the horse, I say, no, I don't want to stand behind no horse. You don't want to stand in front of one of them things. If they get mad, they can kick sideways. You stand over there, bam, like that. What do you think about that? That's crazy, isn't it? Uh, you ain't no safe place around them things. And they're ugly. You know what they can do? A camel can stick his head 
swinging his legs like that and look at you with his head upside down. You talk about ugly. An upside down camel's face looking at you. I, when I read that, I thought, I know people like that. I know people. They kick you no matter what you do. They always got some blessed fuss or something to fuss about or gripe about. And you know what they do? They, sometimes, if you're on a camel, they'll just turn around and stare at you for no reason. I thought, that's what they do to me when I go to a restaurant. Them church people. On, I know they're church people. You can tell they've been to church on Sunday morning. They look at me like, you ought to see them. Watch, when me, me and my girls, we'd all, we'd all walk around there and, and half, the, half the crowd in there go, oh, ugly looking camel old women. Look like a camel with their head going upside down. And you know what else they can do? They spit. They'll spit at you. They discharge saliva. And it stinks. They say it has a horrible. You ever smelt camel spit? I have not. You have? Uh, uh, if you've, has anybody here ever smelt camel spit? It stinks. One man back there. You're for real, have you? All right. Uh, listen, brother, they say it's horrible. And they'll just turn around and go like this and look at you and go, Right in your face. And I thought, good Lord, I, they're a Baptist. Every one of them camels got to be. I'm, I, I'm telling you, it's unbelievable, unbelievable the way church members do. Number four, I'm going to hurry. Babies is marked by failure to recognize obligation. Failure to recognize obligation. They said one time, the president, Woodrow Wilson, I don't know a lot about him. He was president. And his secretary one time told him, she said, Mr. President, you should take a day off tomorrow. You deserve it. You've worked hard. Take the day off. And the president looked back at her and said, my boss won't let me. She said, your boss? You're the president. Who's your boss? He said, my conscience. My conscience won't let me See all this work to be done and refuse to do it. Lord have mercy, that's what we need in churches today. We don't come out here and cut weed because it's fun. Listen, all my ministry, all my ministry, we've had things come up and there's some, something has to be done. I don't always do it because I like it and I feel inspired. People, you do it because it needs to be done. Lord, I don't, you say, what's my birthday? What's my anniversary? I don't, I don't get that kind of junk. If the house is burning down on your birthday, you can't put it out. If there's somebody in a car wreck, you can't help them. If it's your anniversary, I'm not saying it's wrong to celebrate your anniversary, your birthday or whatever. I'm just saying, brother, what about, you, you know, if a man's car is stuck in the ditch, you ought to stop and do something about it. You have a moral and spiritual obligation to get out and help. You sure do. I'm not saying ladies have to get involved with strangers or people help. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, let me just say something. Let me illustrate here. Uh, uh, Jason, come up here just a second. Come up here just a second, brother. Yeah, either one of you. <laughs> either one, come up here. And Jeremy, you come up here just a second. I want you to get this side of this pulpit right here and you to get that side of that pulpit right there. All right, now, let's just say, brother, I say, boys, we need to move this pulpit, y'all. We need to move this pulpit, y'all. And uh, uh, when I say three, grab that in and just pick it straight up. Don't move it. All right, now, that thing's heavy. All right, go ahead. All right, <laughs> that's solid cherry. Wood. That thing there, that thing is so heavy. It take, it take. All right, y'all go ahead, y'all go ahead. Just keep lifting, keep lifting. My goodness, you ain't got nothing else to do. All right, now, now look, now look. I'm gonna show you the average church. Go, y'all go ahead, y'all go ahead. Here's, here's you. This is you. Work, boys. It ain't gonna get moved like that. Now, now there's the work being done. There, there, you got two people doing all the work and everybody else sitting here saying, why ain't the church doing better? Wonder why we ain't growing. Because you won't get off your blessed assurance. That's awful, isn't it? Amen. And stand up and say, hey, you know what? 
What's wrong with a man that will sit here and watch them do all that work and not jump up and help them? There's, there's something inside of me that my mom, I guess, beat it in my head. She said, when you go to somebody's house, if they're doing something, jump out and help them. All right, wow. sit down, fellas. Listen, what if a fire department, listen to me, people. What if a fire department, all the firemen met at the, at the fire department, and everybody sat there, and boy, they shined their trucks. Man, they looked at them things, and they studied fire manuals. Buddy, we're the best fire department in the world. I'm telling you, I'm, look, at the, look at the wheels on this thing. Start her up. Ah, oh, listen to that baby run. It's ready to get the job done. All that. And then there's a fire, and they just sit down and play checkers. They're playing. They're, they're, that ain't even a real fireman. If you're going to sit there, and it don't matter how beautiful the church is and how your doctrine is perfect and how you live so good and everything's great and you never sin. And all that. if somebody's out there burning to death, what is, we got this mentality of being a Christian is, well, I don't do this and I don't do that. My life is clean and I go to church on Sunday. Listen, people, we're in the rescue mission work. We're in the ministry of reconciliation. You understand that? I think, I, think, I think most church people don't even get that through their head. What if the police sit in the police station and shine their guns and shine their shoes and talked about all the stuff they know while the criminals tore the city all to pieces. Well, they're not, I mean, that's what babies do. Babies stay in the back seat and play while daddy keeps the car on the road, puts the gas in it, keeps them from getting killed. Somebody got to drive. Some, it's time some of y'all grew up and you've been coming to church a while. You've been coming to church a while. It's time for you to grow up. Listen, take your responsibility. Everybody can't drive a bus. Everybody can, you can give money. You can, give, you can either give money or give time or give all or, or, or all of the above. Everybody, and listen, there's no telling what could be accomplished for everybody in church to do something for God like we're supposed to. I forget that time we coming back from Alabama. Coming back from Alabama. And we was driving up the road. And I'm telling you people, Lord have mercy. It, if you ever come through Chattanooga, coming up that Interstate 24 and 75 goes one way and 24 goes one way. And, and Chattanooga, there's eight lanes of traffic, I believe. Four, and then a big concrete wall, and four. There's a lot of people go through there. Everybody going from, to Nashville, Knoxville, down to Atlanta. I mean, I'm, it's bumper to bumper. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. And I had probably 15 young people in a van. Some of y'all might have been with us on that trip. Remember, remember that trip? And uh, we was coming up through there and two or three cars behind us. And I was flying, going up through here uh, like this, driving that van. And about that time, I saw a car go blam. Some truck slammed into another car and slammed them up against that, that brick wall. I went, oh, Lord, y'all. He wrecked. Somebody's had a wreck. Instinctively, and I'm, you might not have done this, it's, it's my instinct. I put on the brakes, went over. I couldn't get on the emergency room cause, lane because it was way over there. And I got on this. There's a little lane between the fourth lane and the brick wall, you know, there's a little, you can barely get a car on that. And I pulled that van over and said, everybody be still, be right here. I'm going to go back and see if they're all right. And I jumped out of that thing and I went running back down the interstate like this. I mean, there was trucks flying on both sides. And I, me I remember thinking, I have a moral obligation to save somebody's life if I have to. You say, I just let them out well, maybe you could. That's between you and the Lord. I can't do it. And I run down there, and the, the, the van doors open up, and I said, stay in that van! Because there's cars are whizzing by there at 80 miles an hour. And I opened that door, and there's a kid in the back seat, and there's a guy over there, and he was like this right here. And I said, man, you all right? Let me help you. And he come out of there. I don't know if he thought I, I don't know what he's on, something or something. He come out of there swinging and coming and hit me right here. And I was holding him because his car's whizzing by. And he hit me in the stomach. And I said, whoa, dude, whoa, whoa. I'm trying to help you, man. You all right? He was all to pieces. I don't know if he had bones broke or what. But he started going out in the, in the interstate, staggering around like that. And he's running out like that right there. And cars just going, boom, boom, boom. I said, whoa, oh, man, you're going to get killed. And that girl, I can't remember her name, one of them 
young ladies come out of the van and she come running back around. I said, tell them to stay where they're at. This guy, because I wouldn't let him out in the interstate, climbed over that brick wall like that and got out on the other side. Car's going that way. So I jumped the brick. Well, this is 3 o'clock in the morning. And he done hit me one time and I was trying to hold him back. And I went and tried to grab him. I said, you fool, you're going to get killed. I could not stand the thoughts of just watching a man get run over by a truck. Now a little kid would just say, ooh. That's awful. I'm a grown man. I can't just stand and watch somebody get run over. Where'd we get this philosophy of, ah, it's their own fault, let them, listen. What is wrong with our, you know what? There's people in big cities get beat up, and there's a hundred people just walk by and say, I ain't getting involved. And that's the attitude most church people have this morning in the work of God. So I finally got him. I pushed him up against this wall, and she grabbed him. She grabbed him by the neck on the other side of that wall, and I held him like that, and the cops came and got him. He got killed. This morning, this morning, Jimmy called me because they thought I was late. I had a big bag of trash sitting outside the car, and I backed out real fast, and I felt some boom. I thought, man, I hit a dog. I thought, what did I hit? And I pulled back up, and I went, boom. And I brought up that bag of trash, and I'm telling you, there's been some nasty people at my house. He, he cooked macaroni and cheese at 11 o'clock last night. Wasn't that what that was? Shoot. It was smashed all in there, all over my driveway. And I had this suit on. And if I'd have been a little baby, I went, goo, 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 nasty, nasty. I could not leave that in my driveway because when I get back, it's going to be all over the yard, right? Every dog in the neighborhood. So here I am out there this morning picking up filth, diapers, what Frankie's diapers, my hands, macaroni and cheese, and some stuff that looked like puke. Honest, and it smelled. And I was putting it in another trash bag. You say, Brother Dan, listen, that ain't fun. I, it's my house. It's my driveway. I don't want dogs spreading. I have an obligation to do it. Somebody got to. Somebody got to. You can't say, I'll just sit in a nice air-conditioned building and I'll just come and I'm not going to do anything. I'll just let everybody else pay the bills and I'll let everybody else drive the buses. I'll just let them all do everything. While you sit and suck your pacifier, world going to hell. When I got saved, it was ingrained in us. We didn't have to make ourselves go to church. He said, I don't, I don't get this, I can't get this new philosophy through my head that because it's a special day, you don't go to church. I can't get that through my head. I, I know people say, why is for this? It's Christmas. I can't get that through my head. It's an honor and a privilege to serve God and come to church. We're going to live with him forever in heaven one day. Great day in the morning. It's your grandma's birthday and you forget God. I can't get that through my head. I can't get it through my head. I can't get that through my head. Listen, every day is special, y'all. When your family gets so big, everybody's got a birthday, everybody's got an anniversary, everybody, they something every week. You got to say, look, I got to grow up, take my responsibility, and serve God. I'm not saying don't go to your grandma's birthday. I'm not saying that. Don't, you're wham wham again. I'm just saying there got to come a point where we grow up. Amen. I cannot work my soul to save. For that, my Lord has done. But I can work like any slave for the love of God's dear son. I can't work to get saved. I can't work to stay saved. But I can work like a dog because I am saved. I sure can. And I'm telling you folks this morning, I challenge every person in this room today. Grow, grow up a little bit. Don't be so touchy. Don't get your feelings hurt because you heard somebody said something about you. Or you so, I mean, you know that's going to happen, right? You said something about other people. 
How's that all right? I'm going to say, well, she's talking about me. You're talking about her. We're talking about you. Same thing. We all need to just get our eyes on the Lord. Help move this thing. Help move this thing. We need bus drivers. We need bus workers. We need, Lord, help. Mercy. We need, like, men, good night. Ladies, uh, people to work with the seniors, like I mentioned a while ago, just unbelievable what could be done if everybody here would say, you know what? I need to step up a notch, do my part, and help carry the load. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody's talking, nobody's moving. Church, babies. Maybe you're here this morning, you say, Brother Danny, I've been slack. I know that I've been slack. Be honest with you, preacher, I've just been sort of just sitting back because I know somebody else will do it. It's about time for me to take some responsibility. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get down and say, Lord, I'll, I'll help move that pulpit. I'll help. I'll help. I'll help pay them bills. I'll help get that job done. Amen. I just get out of my seat this morning. Come on down here. We're not going to sing. We'll just have just a little short invitation of prayer this morning. Something's coming. You can pray right there at your seat or just get out of your seat and come down here and get down on your knees and say, Lord, I'll do my part. Can't, I mean, I know everybody's got jobs and stuff like that. I ain't stupid. I know you got families. I know you got wives and children. I got that. I ain't, I ain't crazy. But, you know, Jesus saved you from hell, people. And he said to do it. Occupied like I come and, and work. Work for the night is coming. Maybe you're here this morning, you need to come. Get your heart right with God. Maybe just get down on your knees. Come on right now, come on. Come on right now, join these on the altar. But Lord, right now, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better by your grace. I am not going to let the devil just help me sit on the shelf my whole life. I'm not going to do it. Lord God, please help me and have mercy on me. Oh God, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. I pray right now in Jesus' name that you touch every single heart here this morning. I ask you, God, that you'd bless our church. Cause us to go and grow and prosper for the glory of God. Lord, I pray that you'd bless and give us workers in the vineyard. Lord, God, give us soul winners. God, give us bus drivers, bus workers. God, give us Sunday school teachers. God, give us uh, junior church workers. Oh, God, give us, help us, Lord, we pray. Do what ought to be done. Have your way in our lives, Lord. Touch us, God, we pray. Move in every single life and heart. Lord, bless Shining Light Baptist Church. Help us to grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll thank you and praise you for it all. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen.